His morning crew, it's Rob and Liz on his radio. And this morning, it is the fabulous Equinox Orchestra. It's uh, Clay Johnson, Jeremy Davis, spending some time with us. We're so grateful that you've taken some time out of this morning to be with us today. We're super well, we had fans. nothing else going on, so, uh, so, so uh, <laughs> I know. What do you do during thanks, a COVID? Right, right. <laughs> Just sit around thanks for having us. Thumbs. <laughs> yeah, it is going to be a great day. We are jumping right into it. So, um, Clay, I want to ask you a couple of things. Okay. Go ahead, shoot. Play. Um, it looks like a couple of years ago, you had a new addition to the family. Is that right? Yes. Uh, so my wife and I traveled over to India to meet our, um, our adopted daughter for the first time. And we, um, we, we <laughs> brought, that was actually four years ago. She was two years old when we got her. She's wow. six year old. She's six years old now. Uh, but yes, we adopted a beautiful, uh, Indian girl into our home and, and uh, she's been a joy. Uh, she's taught us so much about ourselves mm. and about our, uh, our weaknesses and our strengths. And, <laughs> and we've kind of grown really, we've, we've grown as a family for sure. It's, it's been, yeah. a, she's been a great blessing to us. That's what kids do. They teach you how you're right and how you're wrong yes, <laughs> all the yes. time. Uh, something else I noticed when I was uh, scrolling around was you did this thing called parking lot pastor. So tell me what that's about. So this, so, I, so I've been in the ministry my entire life. My dad's a preacher. My grandfather's a preacher on both sides. Great grandfathers are preachers on both sides. Um, and growing up, I swore, and Jeremy can attest to this, I was never going to go in the ministry. I was never going to go in and work in the church at all. And I fought I fought it with all my soul, <laughs> but God had different plans. And so, and Always. I'm thankful that he did. So um, I went into the ministry, worked for, with several churches around. Um, and then of course, my other love is music. So mm -hmm. I was working with churches and working with music and, you know, those two things were always, um, you know, kind of fighting for, for my calendar time, my attention. The music grew to such a point where I, I, I decided it would be best to kind of step out of the ministry and just do music full time. Um, but then I realized there was this huge hole in my heart uh, that, that, I, that I needed to fill with, uh, with ministry. So um, uh, with the help of a, of a good friend of mine, D Dina Blizzard, who's a comedian who does uh, online uh, streaming uh, you know, things on Facebook, I started just going on on Facebook Live and saying, hey, "I want to talk about the Bible. Does anybody want to listen?" So, uh, and I was doing it from my car, from the from behind my steering wheel. And uh, Dean is actually the one that came up with the name "Parking Lot Pastor." So she's like, "Hey, it's the Parking Lot Pastor." So it, it kind of stuck. <laughs> and yeah, I, I just last night filmed episode um, I think 128. So uh, it, it's been uh, it's been going on for a while now. That's Clay Johnson, Jeremy Davis along with us. They are the fabulous Equinox Orchestra. They're going to have some songs featured in a movie, movie on Fear Flix. Going to tell you about that in just a bit. But Jeremy, I noticed you took like this massive road trip in 2017 from here all the way out to the West Coast. Gosh, did we ever. We learned that we don't ever want to do eight weeks in a tour bus again. <laughs> it was amazing. We, we literally zigzagged the country. I mean, it was, it was, um, you know, it was kind of in support of our PBS special. That was kind of a big deal for us. And we played for eight weeks on the road. I think we had a couple weeks off in the middle for Easter. Um, and it was an adventure. Gosh, we saw so much of the country and we got to travel on a big, beautiful bus. And, and we love that. But Clay and I decided that after that massive, crazy trip, we, we want to keep it to two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then be home for a while. We, just, we, have, we, we both have three kids and that's a lot of work. <laughs> well, it looked like your family came along with you on some of it because I saw yeah, you know, they, in Yosemite. Yeah, they are able to um, um, come with us. Matter of fact, um, we, we actually took a, um, uh, we had a tour all the way up to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, and we ended up, we were doing a, a ministry project up there, uh, kind of working with the church. And we ended up taking um, uh, the whole big band, well, a, a, a reduced version of the big band. Uh, we took four wives and seven children all on the bus. It was crazy town, we, uh, but it was a blast. It was, uh, talk about memory making for sure. You did the zip line with your family out in Yes, said we did. Yeah, that was, matter of fact, as soon as the big tour with the band ended, I, I went straight back to California with, with my little crew, with my wife and three kids. And, and we had the most fun. We did a big loop through all of the uh, national parks. And we've been dying to go back. I think our favorite, favorite was Big Sur. 
and um, and um, uh, what's the other place? The the um, uh, where the where the big trees are, uh, the redwood forest. I mean, there's so many great places out there. It's just, I mean, the Grand Canyon. You know, you can't beat that. Yeah, what was it like? You had a picture in front of the General Sherman, which is a humongous tree. I think family. they say that thing. Matter of fact, I have that picture on my wall here. It's the largest living thing ever, right? I mean, it is. It's it's it, and and pictures do not do it justice. You've mm-hmm. got to you've got to see the thing in real life to to really appreciate it. Jeremy Davis, Clay Johnson, fabulous Equinox Orchestra. You're going to be featured. Your music is in a Pure Flix film with with none other than Scott Bayo and Chachi. Christy Swanson. <laughs> What'd you say, Chachi? Chachi. <laughs> Chachi. Chachi. Yes. Uh, counting or actually courting, courting mom and dad. How did this even come about that your songs are going to be in this movie? So we have a really good friend of ours from high school. Jeremy and I grew up together, by the way. We've been best friends since the seventh grade in West Monroe, Louisiana. And so there was another young lady that was uh, a year older than us, but, uh, but she, she went to junior high with us, was in band with us, went to high school together. We were all friends. And then she went on to do big things and uh, became a movie producer in Los Angeles. And she gave us a call in the middle of the pandemic and said, hey, I got a, I got a movie and, I, and I, I picked out all these great songs. But what was it, Jeremy? It was like... Uh, it was- oh, it was, a, it was a Sinatra song, a Natalie Cole song. And if, if you don't know anything about movies, I mean, the fact if you put a Sinatra song in your movie, you're gonna, you just doubled the budget of the movie, right? I mean, it's <laughs> crazy expensive. So she said, you know, guys, I love you. I love your music. Do you have anything that would, that would kind of fit these scenes because I can't afford these tunes? And we're like, you know, probably, probably not, you know, but send us like a director's cut so we can see it. And we, we watched it. We got the vibe of the tune. And I think it was like four days, Clay. It was, we cranked out music so fast. We, we got in a room and just started writing out stuff. We got our kids involved. My, my daughter actually wrote a song and sings a song that's, that's featured in the film. Jeremy wrote a song that she sings also in the film. And uh, well, we, we had so much fun just, just being so creative and going to the studio. And, 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 and thankfully, we didn't have anything going on. So we could really devote, you know, just cram all of our time to, 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 it, to make it, this happen. It really was God's timing. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we, we hadn't been in the studio in like four or five years. And we had a studio session coming up already so she called us we wrote the songs i mean we we and I, I grabbed my guitar and just banged it out you know and then we went we, we just did a real easy uh, scratch version we sent it to her she loved that she put them the scratch version in the movie and sent it back to us i'm like okay this is gonna work mm. so like the next week we were in the studio with the with the big band and, and we had one of our um uh, amazing arrangers, Aaron Lyrian, write out arrangements, and he just hit a home run. She loved them. They're in the movie. That's the opening song. I think the closing song. One of the middle. One of the songs right in the, in the when the when the when the plot starts to thicken. Uh, so it was a little bit out of our um, normal normal scope of what we do, but by the grace of God, we made it work. I love that. And right from Savannah, Georgia. I mean, can you get any better than that? Yeah. And and, and, then, and it's pure flicks too, right? It's a family. Right friendly movie it's the 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 story is, is fairly simple you know it's it's a it's about a couple that's drifted apart and then and then their kids kind of intervene in an interesting way and then bring them back together and uh and it's it's a it's a special thing for us to be able to have our first soiree into the movie business with a with a friend we went to high school and college with um and, and have it be on pure flick so we're, we're pretty excited about it called courting mom and dad scott bayo christy swanson starring in it it's the fabulous equinox orchestra jeremy davis clay johnson thanks for the time we're looking forward to the movie coming out on tuesday thank you guys so it's our much. pleasure guys thank this you great we appreciate it his morning crew so if you're able to go off to a Super Bowl thing this weekend, you know, the party with a friend and you bring over the snacks and you have the uh, the bottle of soda that you bring for yourself because nobody else likes the soda that you like <laughs> or there's not enough of it and you got to bring enough of it for yourself. Uh, so here's the thing. OK, I, I, I would love to know about unique kind of snacks that you bring to your Super Bowl gig, if you're having one this weekend, or you just want to reminisce of the way you Super Bowl parties used to be before COVID. But looking around the states, here's the thing. Pizza seems to be a big thing in New Mexico and Washington and Connecticut and Massachusetts. When you take a look at uh, South Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, and Maryland, it's chili. So they're taking a look at all the different parts of the country and what kind of snacks that they bring to the Snooper Bowl, to the Snooper Bowl party. It's not, it's, a, it's not a Snoop Dogg party. It's a Super Bowl party. <laughs> That's the Puppy Bowl this year. <laughs> yeah, Snoop and Martha at the Puppy Bowl. 
<laughs> That's redefining a Super Bowl party, huh? Snoop Dogg coming over. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I got my box of chips and my Pepsi. So, so I started thinking about unique snacks or something that you bring that only you would bring to the Super Bowl parties that you go to this weekend at 800-447-7234. I'll, I'll tell you what I bring. What? I bring spapoop. It's what? very unique. Not a lot of people know about it, but they've had this before. Spapoop. Spapoop. Spap- not poop. No, I said that wrong. No. Spapoop. <laughs> Don't turn it into something that's not. <laughs> It like it's that. Spap, I was just trying to sound it's spap it out. Oop. Spap oop. That's what and I bring. What is it? You've never heard of it? Well, I don't usually think so. I I always bring the box upside down. So if I turn the box right side up, it's doodads. Oh gotcha. <laughs> you know, Rob, you are you are something else the way you see things. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. We've gone to Super Bowl parties before, like at church, where it's everybody brings a different kind of soup. So it's S O U P for bowl. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is that unique? Sure, it is. For Liz, that's unique. She brings the chicken okay. noodle soup <laughs> from Campbell's. Yeah. <laughs> Just get it out of a can. What about you? And where did it come from? You got it from mm-hmm. somewhere, right? 800 447 7233. His morning crew. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Let's chat Super Bowl. You've got the snacks. I don't know what it's going to look like for you with pandemic. If you've got a small crew that's coming over, if it's you and the family. But we're very curious this morning since, you know, snacks are a big thing. What do you bring that's different to the Super Bowl that you go to, the parties that you go to? 800-447-7234. I always have to make a buffalo chicken dip. Luke, my oldest son, he's like, you're making that dip, right? Like (laughs) every year. It has to. So I don't know how different it is, but that's what I make. Christine, she makes something totally different. She says, I'm Filipina, and it seems I'm expected to bring lumpia, which I've never heard of, but it's a Philippine version of an egg roll. And she said, basically, it has more meat than vegetables, but they're delicious, and everybody's looking for them, so I'm going to need to try those. Then Lindsay said, we're having a a, a fun in-home party, so it's just going to be her kids. It's going to be her husband, herself, and then she makes a dip in the crock pot and it has like seasoned beef and cheese and all that good stuff and they use Fritos to scoop it out. Ooh, Fritos. Yeah, those Frito scoops. That's my kryptonite Fritos. Oh, that sounds so good. His radio, 800-447-7234. Here is Anita. What is it for you, that Super Bowl snack that's unique, Anita? It is unbelievable and very simple. It is a pepperoni pizza dip, and you put eight ounces of cream cheese in the bottom of a pie plate. You add your spaghetti sauce of choice on top, preferably low carb as well. Then you put sharp shredded cheddar cheese over it and then tiny pepperonis or if you want to get the bigger ones you can and you can use turkey pepperonis as well and you dip that in either pork rinds or mission Mm. car balance wraps that you heat with olive oil for five or six minutes and break them up like chips and it is out of this world and it is healthy for you oh that does sound so good when you you had me a pork rind i'll tell you that (laughs) (laughs) i like the pork rinds where did this recipe come from where'd you find it my middle sister gave it to me, and now it is in my low-carb recipe book, and we eat it often. It's very good. So it's low-carb. I would think that might mean somebody's gone through a weight loss journey. Oh, yes. Uh, my two sisters and my mom and I, and I've actually lost over 41 pounds of fat last May. Still on that journey. You go, girl. I love it, Anita. Thank you so much, and y'all have a very blessed day. Rob and Liz. His Morning Crew. It's possible you might think like Liz, because Liz does not want to ever, 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 ever step foot on a roller coaster. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. That's a fact, right? Yep. Yeah, it's a fact. Never wants to step foot on a roller coaster. I found one for her. Nope. Yeah, oh, no, no. You have to try it at least once. And I found the perfect roller coaster for Liz to try once. Nope. Yes, yes. It's, It's in Saudi Arabia. So it's a nice travel. So it's a vacation. You don't even want to take a vacation. It's a Six Flags in Saudi Arabia where the world's fastest roller coaster is going to be built. It's known as the world's tallest freestanding roller coaster structure. It even has some airtime where you will feel weightlessness. 
No. Mm -hmm. And it only goes, you can handle this, 155 miles an hour. No, 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 no. 2.5 miles. It'll be open in 2023, so you can prepare yourself. Liz will be able to prepare herself for this first time ever on a roller coaster. Found the perfect one for her. No, 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 no. She'll turn no. around. Don't worry about it. No. She'll turn no. around. Mm-hmm. No. Yep. So, no. So just write this on the book today. Falcon's Flight. Six no. Flags in Saudi Arabia. No. 2023. No. Liz's first roller coaster ride. No. Mornings with Rob and Liz. Ooh, you mentioned roller coaster to Liz, and she gets a little whacked out. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. We're trying to get her on the world's fastest roller coaster that's being built, Saudi Arabia, Six Flags, 155 miles an hour. It will even give you the feeling of weightlessness on one of the drops. This sounds yeah. so cool. Uh huh. Sounds like something I want to do. I don't even like. I have to be talked into getting on on the Scooby Doo rides at some of the theme parks. So I'm not thinking I'm doing this. And I will tell you that Leslie, she texted in, and she is exactly on my uh, in my mindset. She's like, absolutely not too much jerking around, too many sudden drops. If I wanted that much stress on my body, kind of make me sick. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Gene's here at 800-447-7234. You're on his radio, Gene. What say you? The faster, the better. Front car, I mean, oh, 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 oh. it's it's the most awesome feeling. You just can't even imagine. She really needs to try that. No. <laughs> I've, I've been on one before, but tell me, so tell me, what is the scariest roller coaster you've ever been on? I think the last one that I was on, well, because of everything that's going on, but um, the last one I was on was at Great America, and I think that it extended extends out over the parking lot and then it goes at like a, a 90 90 degree and it goes just straight down and then swerves all of a sudden and it's like i bet i went on that probably five times in a row nice. and my daughter yeah. finally asked me please can we not go on this again you know and i was like oh, you sure because the lines are just going to get longer as time goes on so <laughs> she did not want me to do it again rob and liz his morning crew Got a solution, especially if they like to skate. Put this newly created jetpack on them, and pew, they are flying down with those skates. Pretty amazing. Well, it's not no. necessarily a jetpack, but the guy who created it is calling it a jetpack. Yeah, and it can make you go, and it doesn't sound like a lot when you hear it. If you're thinking about, well, I'm in my car going 55 miles an hour, it goes 18 miles an hour. Think about that. On skates. <laughs> you are flying. You are. Yeah, but this guy, he he's an inventor. His name's Bryden. And he said, you know what? I just was tinking around. I had uh, some spare parts. And so I thought, let's do this and go skating. And so they're trying it. And it, I think they're trying to put it on the market. They are. It's a wooden frame. So it looks really, you know, homebred with a wooden frame. So it's not a backpack, backpack, but a wooden frame. And a propeller on the back of it. They call it a jetpack. It's not really a jetpack. You're not going to, you know, fly off into outer space or something like that. But no. it's got a little weed. He calls it a weed whacker kind of propeller <laughs> that he puts on the back of this thing. And it looks like fun. If you know how to skate and you can stay up, you know, not nose plant into the lawn somewhere. No, I, when I go ice skating and I have tried it, I think I've tried it once. I had the walker thing <laughs> that you kind of, that's as fast as I can go. I don't have very strong ankles, evidently. <laughs> uh, I so want to see you. Okay. It's, no, this, you this is going to be a couple date. Amy and myself and Liz and Joey. And when they put the skating rink up downtown, we're there. I want to see Liz using the walker <laughs> at the skating <laughs> <Hey>. rink. <laughs> His morning crew. If you uh, if you watch this this weekend, you'll see that they look so bored. They're watching the clock. They don't want to be at work. And then all of a sudden, Dolly Parton jumps in and sings nine to five. What? What is happening? It's one of the Super Bowl commercials this weekend. Oh. Yeah. So when you're watching the big game, so evidently Dolly Parton is going to redo the nine to five song. It's going to be in a square space Super Bowl ad. Squarespace okay. is, you know, how you make websites. So it's a website designing kind of a thing. So because that's exciting. 
<laughs> but if you bring Dolly Parton into it, it does. Yeah, the excitement level goes up. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. So what most people are talking about is not actually the commercial itself. It's that that Dolly mm-hmm. Parton's remade the song a little bit to fit into this commercial for nine to five. So something to look forward to. Although I will have to admit, in in these past few years, Super Bowl commercials are not the thing anymore. They just don't seem like they put their – they cost, number one, a lot of money just to put on a, a Super Bowl. Money. But back yeah. in the day, you used to have all these creative Super Bowl commercials that people would tune in just for commercials who didn't like football. Right. Some people would even, like, go afterwards and go to places like YouTube or whatever to see just those commercials and relive it because they were so good, like little mini movies. Yeah, that hadn't happened in the last couple of years. So they're trying to make a big deal out of the Dolly Parton commercial with 9 to 5 in this song for a website company. Well, I'm looking forward to maybe just seeing that after the football game. His morning crew. Have you ever seen, and I know we're kind of like these superhero geeks around here, but have you ever seen Shazam? Oh, yeah. I used to watch the TV show. I used to be a big TV show back in the day. Me, too. Well, the guy that plays Shazam in the newest movie, his name is Zachary Levi, he's going to be playing a live-action version of Harold and the Purple Crayon. What's that? Now, I'm... It's a TV show that's been around since, like, 1955. But I got to tell you, I recognize the little kid, and I don't know why. I have no point of reference. I don't know that I've ever seen the book that it's based on. So, wait a minute. You said this has been around since 1955, and it's a show called Who in a a Purple Crayon? It's Harold and the Purple Crayon. It's about a little boy who uses his purple crayon. He creates worlds all around him. Never heard Um, of it. I know. I, I don't either. But evidently it's a big thing because they have had like all these little animated films mm-hmm. all throughout the years since 1955. Well, we have some pre-tweens here. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, college kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, Ian, there are video producers. You, any of you guys even know this? I actually used to uh, read the book when I was a kid. And it was a book first, and it is just so good. It was my jam. Really? Huh. It's so Ian's heard of this. So you, what? so it's a book. I thought it was a TV show. I thought, is it a yeah, TV it's show? a little book. They ended up making a cartoon about it, apparently. I never saw the cartoon. But I read the book, and I just thought it was so cool, his little purple crayon. He was able to, like, like Liz said, he was able to draw little worlds. And um, I really enjoyed it. I was a big fan of color as a kid. Did you have your own purple as crayon, most kids are. Ian? Honestly, yes. He I had his own crayon purple crayon. And I pretended to be Harold. I know what to get for I his did. birthday at Christmas now. And he, here, here's what I see is Ian with his purple crayon and his little onesie <laughs> writing all over Mama's walls. Oh. That's how I see that going. Mornings with Rob and Liz. Okay, it looks like Liz is going to talk accessories to you this morning. And nice accessories. Wait till you hear about this one. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say nice, but did you have a rotary phone at any point in your life? A phone that had one of those spiral cords? Personally, me, yes. And it was a long oh cord, and it, it could go through the whole house. Although, we lived in an 800-square-foot house when I was a kid. so <laughs> Yeah, I think all of us have had a phone uh, that had one of those cords at one time or another in our lives. Well, well it depends on how old you are. I can tell well, you that true. TJ and Ian, who was in our video <laughs> department, don't even know what these phones are. They both said do too. They they seen them in history books. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, if you have one of these phone cords still in your home and you still have a landline, you're still using it, you could make some bank just by doing what this one jewelry designer did. They took the phone cord idea and they've made it into jewelry. First of all, <laughs> it's goofy looking. <laughs> like so this girl has the phone cord necklace. We were taught growing up, that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. <laughs> they have earrings, and then they have a ring made of this phone cord. That's not the wildest part of this story. The no? wildest part of this story is that the earrings cost $900. Phone <laughs> cord? Yes. The necklace is over $2,000. It is literally a phone cord that send off. Put a little piece of maybe gold, make some sort of metal to to attach it. 
that's it. No. I'm going home and it's craft time with Liz. Check my Etsy shop later today. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Here's a question for you. What was the coolest thing that you found or you spotted when you were out of the beach or on a hike, like out in nature somewhere? It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Lily, her dad, and Doggy were on a walk on the beach. She's four years old, and she looks up at her dad and says, Hey, look, Dad, look at that over there. Yeah, and it ends up being what they think is a dinosaur footprint. <laughs> How cool is that? First of all, how observant is she? She's four years old. I mean, normal. I remember, you know, when my kids were four years old, they were just playing with dirt and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But she actually noticed not only the footprint, but that it was different enough to say something to dad. Yeah. And then the thing was well preserved. They say the scientists are estimating it to be over 200 million years old. Probably not that old. But. But the cool thing is, is that it was so well preserved. It was about four inches wide, so it was. Uh, that's a kind. Of, that's that's a big foot, you know. Yeah. It's not from Bigfoot. Yeah. It was from a dinosaur. <laughs> it looks almost like a pterodactyl. It looks more of a bird-like sort of footprint, which is pretty cool. Um, but the National Museum in Wales, because that's where she found it, was on a Welsh beach. Um, they are looking into it and how they can possibly even remove that rock and have it in the museum or make some sort of um, uh, museum out there on the beach. I don't know. It's amazing that all these many years on that beach with all the people that walk on that beach, that she, in, in 2021, she sees it and she's four years old. Very cool. I think she has a bright future in front of her. If she's that observant already, yeah. You know, Indiana Jones needs to be able to get a hold of her, you know? He needs a new short round. Yeah. A new <laughs> That's the second movie, right? The Temple yeah. of Doom. I remember that. You go, Indy, in short round.